Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And um, our first order of business will be to um, introduce Mr. Gonzalez, Principal of March Elementary School who will introduce the special guests that we have this evening. Well, good evening, everyone. We're very excited to be here with you tonight. We're loving everything that's going up on the hill these days, and very excited to have with us uh, one of our greatest contributors, the Little Leopard, who's a fifth grader. Unfortunately, our other Little Leopard is sick tonight, so she won't be in attendance. But this is one of the most selfless little guys I've ever met. He's always trying to figure out ways that he can improve others around him, as well as himself. Um, so you'll see what I mean. He's prepared a little statement right after the pledge. He just wanted to share his latest endeavor with all of you that I fully am supporting, completely behind him. So without further ado, I'll give you great day. Please rise. around but then you look at it and you read it and it just it's contagious it brings a smile to your face so thank you babe for doing that some of my favorite notes are push yourself nobody else will do it for you and the problem is not the problem the problem is your attitude about the problem do you understand <laughs> the fifth grade enrichment program is supposed to document a post-it where it was and what it said and then they will see how long it will be until the post-it changes someone else's dick for them. After they take it down and read it, and 
Also, anyone who finds that that setting should take it down and replace it with another new setting. Thank you. I can keep that one. All right, I'll put it on my door. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well done. With that, Mr. Ramirez, you have the wall noted, please. Thank you. We'll move into superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chandler. We'd like to recognize a few individuals tonight. And uh, we'll start off with March Elementary School because uh, Brayden, I think, led us into a great discussion here about the wonderful things happening at March. So congratulations to March Elementary School faculty and staff for being recognized by PDE as a distinguished Title I school. Each year, the Division of Federal Programs honors the top performing Title I schools in Pennsylvania for achievement and or growth. March Elementary School has been recognized as being one of the top 5% of schools in the state of Pennsylvania in the two most recently completed academic school years in the area of growth. We know that this amazing accomplishment is a result of a total team effort on the part of the entire March school community. And we asked Mr. Gonzalez if he'd like to come up and say a few words about his wonderful school. That's never a hard thing for to do. <laughs> Most of you that know me, uh, very proud of the accomplishments that we've had to this point, but it's just the beginning. I, I do believe that there's still areas that we can grow. Um, and every day we look to literally try to make ourselves and others around us better. And I just see we're continuing in that direction. So very proud of the accomplishments. Again, it's like Mr. Piperato said, it is a complete team effort. Um, I shared with some people before, you know, most of us have to go to work every single day. We have to pay the bills. Uh, but I truly feel like our March family right now, everyone truly wants to be there and enjoys giving back to all the kids and it's showing. And uh, I think we're starting to see some of the benefits and some of the results. So I'm excited what the future has to hold. Um, I'm looking for all nine of our schools to be in the same boat. And I believe that we can do that here in Easton. Thanks, David. Thank you. Congratulations to you and your staff. Greatly appreciate it. Great job, yeah, thanks. Okay, um, one other person I'd like to recognize this evening. Uh, this young lady I've heard a great deal about since coming on as a superintendent. And uh, recently we received a phone call from a parent who asked um, that we could do something special to recognize this young lady because of the difference that she made in her daughter's life. And so I'd like to introduce to everybody tonight Elise Simia and read a little statement. Elise started with Communities and Schools, CIS, in the Eastern Area School District over eight years ago in the CCLC after school program and eventually moved on to a CIS student support specialist at the high school and then the CIS site coordinator at the high school. She's passionate about her work, students, and families. She goes above and beyond her job scope and the call of duty to ensure that students and their families have the best possible care in and out of school for their situations. Because of her leadership at the high school, her staff follows her example of dedication and hard work. The least is an example of a person of true integrity, genuine loving kindness, and she is a blessing to all. The least, thank you for everything you do for our students. Say yeah, well, actually, I didn't prepare for this, so no <laughs> but I would like to know who that parent is right now. So. <laughs> but thank you, um, Emily, and it means a lot. Um, everything I do, to be honest, is just following everything my mother ever told us, and uh, you know, and, and what she's shown. But um, thank you for the opportunity at this school to let me do what I do um, because it means a lot. And, I know that um, being in the school is a real honor because a lot of people find that the school is now the unsafe place and it's nice to make it a little home within our little CIS community. So thank you all for making that happen. But thank you. Thank you for all your work.
Thank you, Mr. Cabrago. We will move into our regular board reports, and we'll start with Colonial Intermediate Unit 20, Mr. Schnee. Yes, thank you. I just have two items here today. Um, as usual, the most recent newsletter uh, is in your folder, talking about the uh, giving a good blurb on the front there about the uh, uh, board of directors as one board recognition month before recognized for our service, much like we were here. Um, and there is also an invitation in there. Everyone is invited to the uh, Excellent Education Awards and their Scholar Recognition Ceremony. The invitation, again, is near Boulder. Uh, that is going to be Thursday, the 16th of April at the Stroudmore, Stroudsmore Country Inn up in Stroudsburg. It's a really nice place. We've been there many times. And the RSVP date on that is March 13th. So if you're available and you're interested, we're all uh, invited to that. Uh, ceremony and dinner. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Eastern Area Public Library. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I sent to Mr. Ramirez a, a brief outline of things, and I have a little bit on each of them. Lots of going on in the library. There's always something going on, which is great. Um, first of all, I want to tell you about we have a folk duo from Hungry Town. In the library to do a free concert on Thursday, March 5th at the main branch. It's at 6 30. And they are they have a connection with uh, a local connection with Martin Guitar. They're a Martin Guitar string patrol artist, is what the terminology is. And they played uh, radio and airplay worldwide, they've been on several television shows. And the concert is sponsored by the Friends of the Library. And like refreshments will be served after the concert. It'll be in the Catherine Lake room downstairs. And attendees are invited to bring to feed Hungry Town, to bring a non-perishable food donation so we can get the benefit of the food pantry or the project at least. Another thing that's coming up pretty soon for seniors, starting about uh, Wednesday, April 1st, we've got beginners Tai Chi or health and fitness. Starts at 9.30 in the morning, runs about 45 minutes, and then Queen Gong, I, my enunciation is terrible, I'm sure, followed by 15 minutes of Tai Chi, and it's a 24 movement chin style short form, which will be the focus of the sessions. Maybe I should go there myself. <laughs> Participants should wear loose fitting, comfortable clothing and sneakers. It's a free course open to the public. And it's being held at the Catherine Drake Room, which is downstairs in the library. And we also have a woman coming. Her, her nickname is Mosaic Mary. And her, she is putting on Fun Mosaic Art Workshop on Wednesday, March 4th, and Thursday, March 26th at the library from 6.30 to 8 on those particular dates. We've got free tax help going on at the library. Started... February 4th. It's every Tuesday morning downstairs, 9, 9 o'clock to 11.30. Folks will need that. That's just main branch stuff. Now we got Palmer Branch. We've got card making going on up there on March 10th in the evening. We have a local crafter who's going to present card making course. And it's it's open anyone from 14 and up. Registration is required. And there's an $8 fee for materials for the card. We've also got a teen chat and shoe going on at Palmer. It's basically a pizza club with a book addiction. And what happens, teens can join up and they have pizza and candy, snacks, laughs, lots of nerdy talk. It's Saturday, March 7th at 2 p.m. It's going to happen at the library. Okay, main bridge. Let's see what else I've got to share with you. One of the things that I find at both branches of the library, there's all kinds of book clubs there. Just to cite a couple of examples, we've got a cook or a cookbook club, we've got a romance book club, we've got a nonfiction book club. At Palmer, we've got American Girl Book Club, Adult Evening Book Club, Forever Young Adult Book Club. And all of these clubs are available for you to check out the times. Themes. They all can be found on the library website, which is eastonpl.org. 
And also, if you're a member of the library and they have you part of their database, you get them on your email. And you get them, you can get them from the main branch, from the downtown library. You also can get them from the Palmer branch. And you also can get a printed copy of the Palmer branch at the Palmer library. And they have, they're chock full of information. Anybody that's, it's, we got a lot of stuff going on. I really, really have a, it's, it's great to be part of this organization. I've been living here for over 30 some years, and it's just been, it's always been special to my family. So we, got, we always have books at some place or another going on. Any questions for anyone? Thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Career Institute of Technology, the Mr. Good, or Yes. So uh, the house that the kids built sold January 4th, a settlement for $285,000. They will be adding two classes. One is for the 2021 school year, it will be a power sport and small engine repair program. And for the 21-22 school year, it will be logistics and supply chain management. And as I mentioned last time, we also got our board recognition gifts. And mine is my pen that the kids made out of steel and used the machining program that they have there. And our little pen holder. So if anybody wants to see them, feel free to subscribe to school district, our names, and for Institute of Technology. Thank you, Mrs. S. Mm -hmm. The Northampton Community College, Mr. Squash. Thank you. Thank you also for the opportunity to let me serve as a representative um, at Northampton for the past seven years. Uh, Bob Pingle and I and Randy Caldero. Um, of your current trustees, and I just want to give a little report on what's, what's going on in the last month or so. The winter commencement was held, and I, I, I put a copy of the commencement program at your place there, but there were 83 Eastern Area, it's a smaller commencement. In the spring is when they have a larger commencement. 83 Eastern Area students graduated, seven nursing degrees were uh, awarded at the pinning ceremony, and uh, Dr. Reverend James Greenfield, the president of the sales with the uh, main speaker, very, very dynamic uh, college president. At the February meeting, uh, it, was a, it was a short meeting because we had our uh, trustees retreat following it, but we did uh, approve a new program for health sciences, the lodging of a new program for health sciences, associates in applied science. Uh, it was a combining of some programs, nothing much new, just a combining some programs. What the effort there is to try to to develop more opportunities for students to transfer out of these health programs into four and six year programs um, and make it easier. They have some agreements with colleges to do that. They're working on more. Um, also, in the, in the retreat that followed, um, in addition to the Monroe campus, we, we talked about the uh, renovation of the library in Buffalo Township, um, which is an opportunity to take a 20th century library and make it into a 21st century library which, again, the community can uh, utilize. Uh, I think would be a great addition to the college. Um, I also, uh, the, the uh, Easton Center, uh, it's in its third year now, and uh, although it had a slow start, I, I try to stop down there once a week just to kind of get a feel for how things are going, and, uh, and, and, and I really think that things are picking up, and I included some of the things going on at the Easton Center in your packet there, uh, one is the, um, they're trying to get the NCC students to volunteer at Paxanosa in, in an after school program for ESL students to get into some things. It's a seven week pilot program. Hopefully if it works, it can be an ongoing kind of program where the students come in uh, in the afternoon and volunteer with the ESL students to kind of as good role models for STEAM programs and things like that. So hopefully that, that gets going. There's a micro-credential program in manufacturing. It's a non-credit program at this point. It's in coordination with the Project of Easton. And the goal is to kind of get, and it's, it specializes in ESL students. You know, we, we have these programs at the um, Southside Center in Dublin, but the one downtown specializes in those who have uh, uh, language barriers to getting into their employment. And it's, a, it's an effort to, to get to work and door with employers and they get into some credit programs when they follow. It's free. It's free through a grant, 
and it's a 16 week program, three different courses that you can take. Uh, and the, the center is located at a point where it's within walking distance for, from South Side as well as the downtown area and the West Ward if, uh, if transportation is a problem. Hopefully, if, if they'll pay some dividends for, for the residents in, in that area. There's also a lot of non credit offerings in that on that campus, as I put a page of all the things going on there. Um, we're trying to get the artists in downtown involved in offering some programs, food service, sanitation, different different things like that, and the, the number of restaurants and and uh, of course a lot of health related health careers with other programs. And the uh, representative the admissions representative who works down there in that center, Mark Horse, has been kind of trying to be proactive and join the Eastern Main Street initiative. Um, and he's trying to have a community college presence in that downtown area to try to get things going down there. But um, that's kind of what's been going on the last month. Anybody has any questions, I'm glad to answer them. But uh, again, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Foundation of Eastern Schools, Ms. Sayago. Thank you, Mr. Chando. I also have a little show and tell not to be outdone by the community <laughs> college. Today's morning call front page, we have a wonderful story here about uh, ukuleles that were purchased for uh, Cheston as well as Paxanosa through the teacher grants which are provided by the Foundation for Eastern School. So Michelle is not here this evening, but I want to thank her for this article. Um, I know it's hard to compete um, with a friendly dog, but we did get a friendly <laughs> coverage on that. So the gala is coming up in March. I know many of you plan to attend. If you haven't sent in your RSVP, RSVP, you can do so by March 7th. And I also just wanted to share that uh, the foundation had a goal uh, for this school year of raising $75,000. They have already exceeded that goal. Uh, so we are doing quite well and so pleased to be able to provide everything that we can for the school district. So thank you for that. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. The Charles Schrein Science and Technology Initiative. Yes. No report. Thank you. Um, East Mary Student Council Executive uh, Report. Uh, the February Student Council meeting was a short meeting, but we talked about um, in March, March 4th is our in house Special Olympics, and March or February 20th. Eighth is the Special Olympics at Liberty, the outdoor track and field. Um, so Eastern students will be participating in both. And um, we are currently setting up stages of a teacher appreciation week. Uh, we're going to host a luncheon and we're reaching out to all clubs in East Center High School and seeing what they want to do uh, to show appreciation to our teachers during this week. Um, that's all I have for student council. But I want to say, as a student athlete, um, Playing on the turf, I really, really enjoy the turf. So I just want to thank you all for that. Um, that's something that's really cool to me. So thank you. Thank you for your report. Thank you. Parent Teacher Association. This is Brian. Hi. Good evening. I am Jennifer Fry, president of the Perry Council of PTA of Eastern Schools. Um, this is definitely a light report, and I wanted to let you know, um, I thought about it, and historically, in the winter months, our PTAs tend to do a lot of fundraising, and the reports that I ask for from the PTAs every month, I ask them to exclude anything that makes money for the PTA. I, I only ask for reports based on um, the programs, the services, the activities that they're providing, um, not for the fundraisers. So, so let me give you what I have here. At Cheston Elementary School, uh, they provided treats to the teachers as a thank you, provided Valentine's treats to the teachers as a thank you for everything that they do. Tracy Elementary had a fantastic activity. They collected candy. Um, that they were sending to local troops stationed in Afghanistan and Qatar. They sent 10 large boxes of candy. The Qatar shipment is still in route. Afghanistan, that shipment of candy has been received and it was distributed by a local service member to um, people that um, he or she is with and that person sent in 
a wonderful thank you back to the Tracy PTA, thanking them for everything that they sent. High school, um, high school is working on sharing the um, PTSA snack bar in the gym lobby with Woodson's Food Services to allow them to be able to offer healthy snacks after the school day in the athletic area. Uh, the next meeting is Thursday evening, 6.30, and we'll be talking about um, planning of the prom after party, which I am in charge of for the last year. So um, if anyone would like to come and assist in that and, and give some input, et cetera, uh, we would love to have you there. High school library, 6.30, this coming kind of Friday, two days from now. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank okay. you. We have a report. We'll move into association reports. We'll start with Mr. Dealey. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I, I want to thank you for giving us off yesterday to commemorate uh, Mr. Chando and myself for uh, President's Day. That's what it's about, right? I, I actually I spent a good portion of the day yesterday reading uh, Dear Martin by Nick Stone. Uh, that's the uh, the book that many of our students are reading in the high school uh, in preparation for our uh, uh, Black History Month assembly uh, next week. Um, I'd say it's a really engaging read, uh, and I was really moved throughout the entire book. Uh, there's a reason it speaks to our students, and I, I would encourage you all to read it and to uh, attend the meeting. Um, here's a brief synopsis of it, just in case you didn't know what it was about. Um, and I took this from uh, Common Sense Media, by the way, it's not my words. Um, in Dear Martin, Justice McAllister attends an exclusive private school with mostly white students. He's on the debate team, has some of the best grades in his class, and is certain he's headed to Yale. Then one night changes his life and puts him on a path that has him questioning why things happen and what he can do to change them. His Dear Martin project, in which he tries to live like Martin Luther King Jr., is put in jeopardy from the moment he's put in handcuffs. Tested by racist classmates, skeptical friends from his former neighborhood, and a rain of bullets, Justice finds himself a target in the battle over police brutality and race. What would Martin do? So the protagonist in the book is a, a, a lot like many of our students, and the issues he experiences are, are very much like theirs. Um, many of you have heard me in the past when I talked about the need for staff training around trauma-informed instruction. And I appreciate that it has become a focus of a lot of our in-service training in the last uh, year and more. Uh, we need to continue that in earnest. Um, as I'm sure you well know, uh, our students learn best when they make real meaningful connections with the educators in their classrooms. Education is all about building relationships. Uh, learning is an emotional experience where our students feel the content more they, than the uh, download meaningless facts, right? I mean, I can lecture about dates, but when you feel the connection, you're going to make that connection more. If a student feels disengaged, it's as much on the teacher as it is on the student. If a student has experienced past trauma, an educator unwittingly steps on a mind that triggers the student and may take some time to repair that relationship. This is where trauma-informed instruction comes into play, and that's why we need it. Uh, we should focus on positive relationship building as the core of our educational practice. And so we will also hopefully begin engaging in uh, developing restorative practices as well in the near future. Uh, with restorative practices in place, you should be able to see a sharp decline in uh, the amount of time our students spend in detention and suspensions. And, uh, I, I know that Mr. Cabrad and I have had conversations about this, so hopefully we're headed in that direction. Um, I also want to thank the board for supporting additional staff in your budget for next year. Uh, we may still be well short of the numbers we had in 2009, but uh, every new employee helps us better meet the needs of our students. Um, and uh, finally, I want to uh, announce that EAEA has chosen to recognize Mr. Gonzalez as our 2020 Friend of Education because of the way he has helped transform Arch Elementary School through his collaborative leadership style. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez will be recognized at our annual Lehigh Valley Friends of Education dinner on April 2nd. And you're more than welcome to attend. I'll send that information out to you 
But uh, we want to congratulate Mr. Gonzalez, and I know we've already done a little bit of that today. So that's the end of my report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other uh, associations um, that have a report to give this evening? Seeing none, we'll move into section four, public to be heard on agenda items. Is anyone in the public that would like to address the board for a particular agenda item? Please come forth, sign your name at the podium, uh, and you'll have five minutes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So my question is surrounding the, uh, the elementary school boundaries. Is it appropriate to bring that up at this point? That's correct. It's an agenda. Okay. Um, I just wanted to understand the criteria surrounding the, um, the, the decision to do the redistrict, redistricting for uh, Forks schools and the Certain things were taken into consideration, like as far as children who may have special needs, um, developmental delays, uh, children, families who have multi um, children in the same household that are in the same elementary school, things like that. What kind of, uh, I guess, you know, what kind of consideration was taken as far as that is concerned? Because I have two children, um, one who's on the spectrum of autism. And I have another child with an Olympic delay. And I'm, I'm, we're in limbo right now. So we're not sure if they're going to stay at Forks. Um, are they going to be split? Two in Forks, one in Cheston. You know, so I just wanted to kind of get a gauge on if that was something that was considered. Um, thank you for your questions. Uh, we certainly would have that conversation with you privately, specifically about your children. So. Uh, Alyssa or I would be happy to chat with you if you want to call us up for an appointment, come meet with us, uh, we can do it via phone, okay. um, but we want to pay attention to those needs, so please reach out to us. Will do, I'm writing my number down here. Excellent. And I'm sorry, would you? Ms. Lee. Alyssa Emile. Okay. Alyssa is the assistant superintendent and I'm the superintendent. Mm -hmm. You can call either one of us or if you want to give me your number, we'll call you. Thank you. So and just to answer your question globally, we'll talk we'll talk privately about your your family, but um, globally we're looking at um, our student population and getting our students to the closest school um, to, to their neighborhood so that we can truly have neighborhood schools. Um, transportation's a factor, location and distance to to that elementary school. That's the global focus, but we'll talk privately. I just wanted to make sure I addressed your question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Carby. <laughs> <Because> team. <laughs> <laughs> so since that's the case, that there's transportation and things of that nature, what should it be addressed to other issues that, that need to be corrected before we start moving children to other locations? Like Cheston is not a, a great school academically. Um, overall, they're at like 30, 33 percent as far as state testing. Um, they're just not the best. And I feel like before you make any kind of changes, let's address the issues that can help the children excel rather than let's, let, let's take these kids and put them here before we make those changes. You know, um, it has been a, a, a great school for a long time, and I just hope that we can make something better for these children to help them excel rather than pushing them along and, they, and then they're, they're still not reaching their goal. We understand. Thank right. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in attendance this evening that would like to address the board on a particular agenda item? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move into section five, executive session report. For the public notice, the Board of Education held executive sessions on January 21st, 2020 and February 4th, 2020. We'll move to approval of minutes and I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes for the special meeting held on January 7th 2020 for the standing committee meeting minutes for academic educational technology and student supports athletics budget and finance <coughs> buildings and grounds and policy on January 7th 2020 
in the regular board meeting held on January 21st, 2020, as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll move to Section 7, Personnel. We'll move 7A, motion with regrets to accept the retirement of four staff members as presented. Mm -hmm. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll move 7B and 7C together. 7B is a motion to approve five staff resignations. And 7C is a motion to approve 13 leaves of absences as presented. <coughs> so moved. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll move 7D to 7F. 7D is a motion to approve four contractual salary increments. 7D is a motion to approve seven volunteer transfers. And 7F is a motion to award one professional contract as presented. One move. And we moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Those motions carry. We'll move 7G through 7J. 7G is a motion to approve one administrative transfer. 7H, a motion to elect two TPE positions. 7I, a motion to elect two long-term substitute positions. And 7J, a motion to elect six support staff positions as presented. One move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry. We'll move 7K to 7N. 7K, a motion to approve one individual for a contractual service position. 7L, a motion to elect three coaching positions. 7M, a motion to elect four support staff substitutes. And 7N, a motion to establish the summer employee rate of $9 an hour as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. And that would be a nay on all of them or on a particular one, Mr. Whitley? On the uh, increase of the rate from $8 an hour to $9 okay, an so hour. Okay, so that's 7 a. Yes. Okay, so you have that noted, Mr. Ramirez? Okay. I can make a statement. Certainly. Explaining my vote. Certainly. I think that the program has been established for quite a long time. We have really no shortage of people that I who I asked about that want to take part in this program. It's a prestigious program for uh, a lot of our ex-students to get the foot in the door for future employment. And it's one of those things where it'd be nice to give a raise. But um, we're at the point now where, it, like in my own life, I think it'd be nice. I'd like to have that, but I don't think I can afford it, so I'm not going to buy it. And I think the district in time in such a time now with our budget coming and looking at us in the face and looking for some ways to cut some of these things. I think eight dollars an hour is a good rate and I would hope to keep it up. With no disrespect towards any of the people in that because we have some great kids to take part in the program. Thank you, Mr. Whitman. We'll move seven O. A motion to approve the 2020 superintendent goals as presented. So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions or clarification? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. We'll move to Section 8, Academics, Educational Technology, and Student Supports. Uh, we'll move 8A and 8B. 8A is a motion to approve the 2020-2021 school calendar, and 8B is a motion to approve the CPEC schedule. For March 16, 2020, as presented. Move motion. Second. Yeah. Motion and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No on A. Okay, Mr. Ramirez. Mm -hmm. Motion's carried. <clears throat> we'll move 8C through 8E. 8C, a motion to amend the elementary school boundaries. 8D, a motion to approve the attached field trips. And 8E, a motion to approve the attached conference request 
as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion's carried. We'll move 8F and 8G. 8F is a motion to approve the KD8 music curriculum. And 8G is a motion to approve the Comprehensive Plan Committee as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any clarifications or comments? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. We'll move 8H. Motion to approve the Colonial Intermediate Unit contract as presented. Motion. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, no. Okay. You have that, Mrs. Ramirez? Okay. Motion carries. We'll move to Section 9, Budget and Finance. 9A, motion to approve the payment of bills for the general fund, special activities, capital projects, and food service accounts as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 9B. Motion to approve Michael Simonetta's attendance at the PSABO annual conference in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from March 17th to March 20th, 2020 at a cost not to exceed $1,400 as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And 9C. Motion to donate the list of on road off. I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, let me read this right. Uh, motion to donate the non roadworthy vehicles to the Palmer Fire Department as attached. Motion. Okay. okay. It's been motion and seconded. Questions or clarifications? Yeah, this didn't come up in the committee. <laughs> so no. I just, no, I, I've never seen this before, so I don't know what the, you beat me to it. I don't know what it's all about. Anytime we have um, non roadworthy vehicles, if you look out back here, these are the ones we're talking about. Okay. They're stored here. Every now and again, we'll be able to donate them to, um, you know, in this case, Palmer Fire. They can use them then for training purposes. Um, it's just kind of a cyclical thing when we have enough to donate, okay. and we have right now out back here a number that are not very worthy. And they come and get them and yep. take them away. Yeah, we're held on once. So. The other uh, yeah. question I have is: um, is it exclusive to one municipal entity, or is it on a rotating basis? That uh, let's say Easton gets them one year, and Forks gets them, and or is it? You know, specific to a particular, you know, how is our termination made? Right. Yeah. That I can't answer without Mr. Smith. Okay. Maybe the extent of the. I understand. So move and second it. Is this something that we definitely need to vote on, you know, like this month, or it could we can wait in the whole ways? I'll, I'll ask for a motion to table. Um, uh, but I have to, I think I made the motion, so I have to withdraw it. Is that correct? No. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion to table 9C. So we Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll get more information. Uh, and hopefully at our next standing committee, which will precede the the next board meeting, yeah. business meeting, I should say. Okay. Uh, section 10, buildings and grounds. 10A, a motion to approve the purchase and installation of new phones at the middle school campus as presented. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Section 11, other business. 11A, motion to approve the expulsion hearing waiver <coughs> form for student number 45271 under the terms as presented. 
So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 11B, motion to approve the recommendation from the Board Committee for Expulsion of Student Number 31569 through the first semester of the 2021 school year. And with placement at Colonial Academy as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. 11C, motion to reappoint. John Squarson to the Canton Community College Board of Trustees for a six year term back from July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2026, as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Squarson. Thank you very much. And thank you for thank you. committing thank you. your time and your service. We'll move 11D. Motion to approve the 2020 Board of Education goals as presented. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, just a quick comment. I will be, you know, soliciting support from board members who would like to chair a particular goal or champion that particular goal and work with. Um, myself and the superintendent so that we can make sure um, uh, we meet our goals. No, I don't have to have it now. You can flood me with your input and volunteerism at a later date. Okay, thank you. Um, we move to section 12. Public to be heard on non-agenda items. Is anyone in the public that would like to address the board on any non-agenda items? Please come forth to the podium. Sign in, state your name, and you will have five minutes then. Well, good evening. My name is Amy Corey, and my husband, Steve, who's over there. And I am here as a parent to address the school board on our concern with the Easton Cheer program. This involves our daughter, Catherine, and we're also, Patty Frederick is also here going to speak on her own. And she has been the main voice of talking to people to try to get this resolved. And we're here to do what's right for our daughters. Both of these girls have really been put in this very unfortunate situation. And it truly breaks my heart that I'm actually here in front of the school board because her heart has really been broken with this situation. I'm going to explain in a moment what has happened. So my daughter, Catherine, we call her Kitty. She's a junior at Easton Area High School. In the middle of December, Coach Wagner removed her from the varsity game day cheer team and advised her and Gianna they were not going to be able or be eligible to receive their varsity letters. This was due to Coach Wagner's ambiguous three unexcused absence rule with scheduling conflict that the coach has created herself. Coach Wagner was fully aware of the all-star cheer program and the weekly practice schedule that Kitty had. And despite us reaching out several times to the coach, Coach Wagner never advised us until after the football season was completed and after the game day schedule was done and the winter schedule came out, she would not excuse any of the all-star conflicts. When the beginning of the season, these girls went to her, they discussed this with her, and she assured them, because they were not on the competition team, it really wouldn't be an issue. But four months later, it did become an issue. So we really came up with, with solutions for coverage. They would share extra games, find replacements, and do whatever they could do to try to resolve this conflict. Coach Wagner would not make any exceptions, any compromises, and only advise, this is my rule, and I'm sticking to it. We also tried to escalate it up the proper channels to get it resolved, so she could continue to cheer for the winter schedule, but our meeting requests were all denied. Athletic director, building principal, superintendent, all denied a request for a meeting to discuss our issue. We reached out to Mr. Whitman, who was very kind and very willing to hear what we had to say and attempt to make things right. He also has hit roadblocks, and that's why I am here, so our side can finally be heard. I must say, as a parent and as a student athlete, parent, that I'm truly disappointed in this whole process of all the Easton faculty shutting us out 
and truly not listening to our concerns. I truly believe, and I, I can't believe, that a large school district, as large procedures as these things, can just take these two great student athletes and just discard them. Like, they don't matter. They don't care. Nothing that they work for, for all this time, matters to them. And I'm all about rules. I'm about structure. I'm about discipline. I truly believe in that. But these two girls have followed the rules and have done nothing to deserve this treatment. My daughter Kitty is on student council, honor roll. She's an excellent example of what it means to be a student athlete and an Easton cheerleader. She has been cheering at Easton since second grade. <coughs> she's been a little rover. All the way through the year, she's been cheering for Easton. And to say that she truly loves and feels Easton in her heart and soul is an understatement. She truly loves to cheer for Easton. That love of cheer that took her to all-star program in seventh grade so she can do it year round. She shared both of these programs for all these years without any particular issue until last year when Coach Wagner, and even as a varsity competition coach, she was the head coach. She knew the schedule. She had no problem with it. So that's why all of this was shocking and surprising. It's worked out other years. It's never been a particular issue. Coach Wagner never advised them that they wouldn't be able to both do both teams. And again, like I said before, it was four months into the schedule that it truly became an issue. And she created a winter schedule knowing that these girls would not be able to do it with this rule that she was creating, and it would set them up to fail. And when Easton cheering season covers eight months out of the year, how can you not have some flexibility for your athletes? This situation is very disheartening and truly, truly sad as a parent. These girls have worked so hard over the years, and it doesn't seem that it matters. After nine years of being an Easton cheerleader, all of this can be thrown away because of a simple scheduling conflict and an unclear rule from a coach. I truly believe that she deserves her varsity letter. Her and Gianna both worked so hard, they do deserve it. They cheered all for football. They've been there for all this time. And I'm truly hoping that we can make things right. Thank you for hearing me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Can I comment on the parent? Uh, I will. I will entertain the individuals who uh, and then the boardwalk. Certainly has a chance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Patty Frederick. Um, my daughter is Gianna Frederick. Um, I've been more of the voice in this um, situation. Um, so I've been the one that's really been hit with the roadblocks. I'm going to speak on behalf of my daughter Gianna tonight. She asked me to read this to you. Being an Eastern cheerleader means a lot to me for many reasons. But the main reason is I love supporting my school in every possible, in a way possible, um, in every possible in every way possible, cheerleading helps me to do that. When Coach Eliza and the rest of the people above her told me I was not allowed to be an Eastern cheerleader anymore, I wasn't going to be able to cheer for basketball and wrestling. It really made me upset. Since I participate in another cheer team, I've always been prepared to make sure both my teams had both teams had both teams scheduled. Last year, I ran into the same problem, but we found a way to make all of it worked so everyone was happy. I was really hoping we could make the same thing happen again this year. When Coach Eliza told Kitty Corey and I that she would not be working with us, that's when we went and asked for a meeting, hoping this would end up working with all of us and our cheer team. I feel like I was pushed off to the side and no one really cared about the situation. Throughout these past couple months, we have been through so much with trying to get everyone's attention about this. I'm hoping this gives you a better understanding of how I feel about the situation. I personally uh, spoke with Coach Eliza prior to tryouts, and she assured me and my daughter and Kitty and Amy that we would work this out and it would be feasible. Last year, my daughter Gianna did not try out for the competition team because it would cause a scheduling issue. Eliza chose to put her on the roster to be an off comp cheerleader anyway because she needed her skill from All Star. Coach Eliza deliberately made her schedule 
for practices on the same night as her all-star practices, which posed a conflict for Gianna. But her all-star team valued her so much that they rearranged her schedule so Gianna could do both and be valued in both areas and would not have to give up Easton. Gianna struggled, came home from practices crying, but said she would not quit because she valued both teams. This year, she made a choice to not do comp with Easton, but wanted to still be game day. You can look at pictures on Lehigh Valley Live. You can look at Instagram pictures where coaches highlighted her as nobody loves Friday nights under the lights more than Gianna Kiger. This school district stripped her of that, every level that pushed back on me and on Amy and these girls, stripped them of this. You remove their uniform, you remove their letter, something they're proud of, something they hold dear to them that they will take with them as alumni. And every person who said to us no, with no excuse, with no reason, except it's her rule, it's my rule, it's the athletic director's rule. It's not a reason to tell an athlete, an honor roll student, someone who values, who represents well, who cares. It's not a reason to tell them you can't have it just because it's their rule. She made a commitment to these girls and they made a commitment to her and they found replacements so no one would be absent on that mat or in, the, or in those stands. They made commitments and kept to them. The coach did. Eight months into it, financially, us $1,000 into it. And now you tell us that many months later, see ya, too bad, it's not our problem. That's not fair to these athletes. And I expected more from every one of the people that I spoke with, and I was told by one of you, it's a lesson for them to learn. The only lesson they learned is they cannot trust their coaches and they could not trust the administration to back them up and to be fair to them and that the children in the school district matter. And I fought for my daughter and I will not allow any one of the people that shot me down to make me feel that I as a parent, that I was wrong in how I handled it. And the lesson I taught my daughter is that you don't stop fighting, no matter how bad that roadblock gets, and I taught my daughter that she is right and she's a value whether the school district feels that way or not. And thank you, Mr. Whitman, for instilling that in my daughter and having faith in you. Good evening. My name is Steve Corey. I am Catherine's father, Kitty, as you just heard them discuss. Uh, my family, we've been in the school district for 50 years. Uh, I live right next door to my parents. Bought the house right near them. We like Easton. We love Easton. We invest in Easton. We own businesses in Easton. We're very proud. And I didn't have anything prepared here tonight. So my comments are going to be very simple. Because I don't think this is that complicated. It should have never become as complicated from the beginning. Um, growing up, your parents went to school when you did something wrong. And you feared them more than the teachers because you would give them more trouble uh, at home. And you'd have to feel the wrath of your parents. Um, I find myself here tonight coming to school to try and figure out what my daughter did wrong. That's my mentality. That you get in trouble, you gotta go to school to find out what's wrong. And I can't figure out what she's done. All the accolades you've heard for both girls. Uh, super kids in school. I challenge anyone here to go to their school, ask about their behavior, ask about their meeting with other kids. Are they snobby for being on these additional teams? Um, there's nothing that you can say. Um, this rule was put out there. It was ambiguous from the beginning. 
It was never confirmed. And now these children are heartbroken. And in my mind, uh, when a rule is set and the reason for the rule ceases to exist, then I think that rule should not exist. And these children should be placed back on that team. They're a junior. They went through the toughest part of the season. They're all the great flips, the pyramids, all the stuff that happens at a game and did very well. Um, and the amount of effort that they put into the basketball wrestling games could definitely been adjusted for their schedule. They're willing to do more games, not less games. Um, they weren't asking for any kind of special treatment. And this is where we find ourselves. Um, like I said, I wasn't planning to get up and speak. I think you heard enough from these two. Um, but honestly, these are wonderful children. I believe they should be put back on the team. And they have another year to go next year, which should be their best year. Uh, please don't let them down. And please add them back onto that team. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in attendance this evening that would like to address the board on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move to other business from board members. What did you say you want to I'd like to comment on the uh, parents that were just here. <coughs> yeah, I was first notified of this issue in early January as the uh, chairperson for the athletic committee for the Eastern School District. I received an email from Ms. Frederick. And you know, I'll be honest, when I read through this and I, I got some additional information talking, I said, you know what, we'll make this right because I'm sure there's a lot of reasonable people in the school district that feel like I do. I'm a 25, 24-year retiree in public schools. And for me, it's always been about the kids. You know, if there weren't kids, I wouldn't have that job. I'd do something else for a bit. Always been about the kids. And uh, as you know, Ms. Frederick and Ms. Corey, I'm a very strong advocate for them and seeking uh, the same thing they do is Maybe not put the kids back on the team because you know, all the bad guns so forth. These kids deserve their varsity letter. Correct me if I'm wrong in anything I'm going to say here, but these kids cheered for three years on two separate squads, the district squad and then there's an the outside squad to augment their cheering skills so they can continue cheering uh, past the Eastern cheering season. Okay, so for three years, under the old coach, I believe that these girls cheered both the Eastern squad and this alternative cheering mm -hmm. squad with yes. no problems whatsoever. Correct, yes. Okay, so now last year a new coach took over, and I support that coach. He's an awesome person. He's had a great year. Our kids went to the States, finished seventh mm -hmm. in the state. Wonderful coach. I just don't see how, you know, unless I miss something here, these girls did the same exact thing for three years prior. Now they entered the fourth year with the new coach. Again, the parents are going to spend that money to go put them on both teams. These girls were on the, the uh, varsity team. They cheered June, July, August, through the summer months, practicing every day, the clinics, the uh, you know, all the things they have to do, the community service, Palmer Days, and so forth. Okay, now the football season starts. Cheering for all the home games. They were varsity cheerleaders for seven months. You know, an average decent athlete, baseball, football, it's a four-month program. And they get a letter for it. They compete and did all the things they're supposed to do. They get a letter for four months. These girls cheered for seven months. They didn't fight. They didn't drink or smoke. They didn't talk back. They did, they, did, they did nothing but cheer. And again, just looking at it, let's put the kids first. These girls deserve rewards for their effort that they put forth for the Eastern School District. Seven months of service. They should get their letter. I believe there was enough ambiguity here, enough confusion to err on the side of the children and say, you know what, off the team, no problem, we're not going to go as a coach, we're not going to go as the athletic director, we're not going to do any of that. But let's give these girls the recognition that they earned. And I'm hoping to get some more advocates from the board <coughs> on meeting with um, the athletic department next week sometime to try to give this whole thing another go around. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I would like maybe some other board members to seek additional information and maybe I could get an ally in this fight to uh, do what do the right thing for the kids of the Eastern School District. So, so I'd like, thank you. I'd like to address some of your concerns, Mr. Whitman. Uh, obviously, one of the issues with public comment is you hear one side of, of an issue. Uh, and certainly we respect um, 
parents who are here tonight and their children. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, this is a result of a new coach putting in um, expectations and standards that um, maybe weren't present before. And as a result of that, um, an issue was brought to the coach that was then brought to the athletic director that was brought to the building principal and ultimately brought to myself. And we had multiple conversations uh, about this issue. So what I don't want represented here is that anybody there did anything wrong or didn't care. Uh, we took great care in deliberating. We made a decision based on what we believe was best for the program and for all of our athletes, uh, including our cheer athletes, um, with great consternation and multiple conversations. This was not an easy decision for anybody, um, but we believed as administration that the rule was in place, it was applied appropriately, the process was pure, and uh, it's our responsibility to support our coaches and our administrators when they do those things. It's a very emotional issue, I get it, I understand. Um, it, the, I can provide the board with lots more information on a, in private, but it's related to attendance and um, and the coach uh, has a specific standard set for that and a threshold that students have to meet for that and we support that and so as, as much as it's hurt it hurts all of us to hear the pain of the students um, this is what we do here we listen we consider uh, we look from all perspectives and ultimately make a decision that we believe is in, in the best interest of everybody involved so i just want you to know everyone to know those steps were never skipped and they were taken very very seriously by all of us thank you is there any other comments or business from board members i i, I do i do have questions <laughs> the, these rules with the attendance or however many practices missed or, or whatever they missed practices being but i'm not i'm not gonna pretend i understand this cheerleading mm -hmm. stuff but I, I had a something baseball but um just to help understand um some confused with, with both sides here as a coach comes in they set the parameters of what's expected of the, the student athletes and, and it's all in writing or the, the when they came in they signed something acknowledging okay that's one thing i don't know i'll say right or wrong or too strict or lean, but uh, that makes sense. And then uh, Bill actually just, uh, I didn't understand how the E works or so for all the sports either. Um, but I do have to agree if they put the time in and they were kept on for the seven, seven, seven months, whatever, um, four months is a requirement. I think that needs to be addressed. Um, again, roles and such that they knew about or signed that they were informed of or read going to argue with that black and white stuff, but I'd like to understand more about the... Well, yeah, um, you know, the issue, if you want to boil it down to the essence from my standpoint, is that, okay, the girls are starting their fourth year, wanting to do the same thing they've done for the last three years. Parents are waiting to hear, if, you know, they have to go ahead and so forth. So now that we're in June, and you know, I look at things like, it should be reasonable. If it's reasonable, then it's probably right. Okay, so now we have a situation where these parents made the decision to spend another thousand dollars putting their kids into a, an augmented program that kind of runs parallel at some point with the, with the Eastern program. Okay. Were they notified that if you win this other program, you're not going to be cheering on Eastern? Now, were they, was it clear? Was it in writing? Reasonably, I don't think a parent would go ahead and spend that kind of money if they got a strong message that no, we're not going to allow that. Your kids are going to cheer for Easton. They can't cheer for the outside because of confidence. And I think the, the parents were unambiguously notified that they wouldn't have had, wouldn't have gone ahead and spent all that money to put their kids in. They just all start cheering, or whatever that is. So, you know, reasonably, I'm not going to put blame anywhere. It's misconfusion, miscommunication. Something didn't get somewhere. But these are the kids that put the time and did the work. Let's give them their letters. If I can make a recommendation yeah. that um, uh, 
maybe, uh, Mr. Kempfire, you can provide the board with a, um, with a full summary. Um, but we certainly heard comments this evening, but if you can then provide the board with a full summary so that everyone gets a clear understanding of, of, of the issue. Mm -hmm. You can do that for us. Happy to. Thank you. Welcome. Is there any other um, business for board members? Can we just say something? Just, uh, this is not a debate. This is yeah, a I mean, we're, we're, you had your five minutes. We appreciate that. We really do. We just want to make sure that the board knows the facts. If he asks the question, I will present the board the facts. Correct. I mean, I, 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 that's why I'd ask for a recommendation from the superintendent to present everything to the board. Okay? I'll Thank make you. sure they have all the facts. Okay? Thank you. Any other board members with any other business? Okay. Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to thank those who the attendance this evening for uh, attending the day meeting. I'd like to thank our administrators for their attendance. <laughs> we have students here and thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.